Breathe, sip, walk. Breathe, sip, walk. Breathe, sip, walk. That's the mantra. If you do this, you prevent getting pneumonia, respiratory distress, deep vein thrombosis, that is blood clots in your legs, and pulmonary embolosis, that is clots breaking and going into your lungs, unless you have a genetic disorder, which is very rare. The first component, five deep breaths every hour. As soon as you're awake, try to be seated up as much as you can. The chest secretions drain down due to gravity. When you're much more awake, you will be given an incentive spirometer in the ward, a very small breathing device, which, if you use five times an hour, replaces your breathing exercises. Sip, sip, sip. Try to drink at least 150 to 200 mils every waking hour, as if you're awake for 10 hours in a day, you'll be drinking about 1.5 to 2 liters, which is the least minimum you need to do for the next two weeks, as you will be mostly on liquids. If you don't, you get dehydration. Dehydration causes nausea, which leads to a vicious cycle needing readmission to hospital. The biggest cause of post-op nausea and vomiting is drinking too much, too quick, or eating too much, too quick, or eating when you are not supposed to be eating. What patients must realize is that they can never eat and drink like they did before. They have a newer small stomach. The sooner they learn to adjust to the capacity of their smaller stomachs, recovery will be plumb normal. Third, walk, walk, walk. Walk five to 10 minutes every waking hour. When you're walking, the calf muscles pump the blood back to the heart and the heart pumps it back and it's circulating. If you lie flat, the blood pools in your calf muscles, stagnates and they may form clots or DVT. And if this clot breaks into your lungs, you get PE and this can be disastrous. One, watch what you put in your mouth. Good quality food. Vegetarian sources of food is best. If you feel the need for animal protein, fish, prawns, eggs are good. Chicken is average as it may be difficult to digest after bariatric surgery. Avoid red meat. Two, watch how much you put in your mouth. The size of your stomach after surgery is drastically reduced. Hence, stop before you're full. Otherwise, you'll end up in trouble. Most problems with nausea, vomiting and reflux are due to eating too much, too quick. When your expectations of how much you can eat meets with the physical reality of how much the stomach can hold, most of your problems go away. Third, exercise 150 minutes a week. This is not for weight loss, but for cardiovascular fitness and all of us must do this, obese or not. Fourth, do not drink 20 to 30 minutes before or after a meal. And fifth, last but not the least, avoid drinking alcohol during the weight loss journey as alcohol is one of the most common factors for failures after surgery.